Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a book that I read, uh, one that I read for my friend Bevan's uh, book club. If you're interested in joining the book club and talking about this book, as well as m many other fine books, uh, feel free to click on the link to the Discord and ask more about it, uh, as Bevan would be happy to have you. Uh, and I think this is another real win for the book club, uh, as it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty solid book. Um, I particularly enjoyed it, spoiler alert. Uh, and today's book is all about cerebral palsy and homosexuality in the state of Utah. I am referring to Leg, the story of a limb and the boy who grew from it by Greg Marshall, which was published in 2023. For those who don't know, Greg Marshall is uh, an American writer uh, who has gotten most of his work published pretty recently. Uh, many of the, or like this is the, this is, this is the first book that he's published, but many of the stories within it were published in articles and, uh, and like short stories in various magazines and whatnot prior to this. Uh, but it doesn't appear that he's, he's written that much else. Um, other than that, uh, Greg has cerebral palsy and he's also gay. Uh, which would have been relevant in LGBT month, but we talked about Cal Penn instead during that month. Uh, but um, uh, Greg, we're talking about Greg Marshall this month, or this month because July is uh, Disability Awareness Month, uh, and uh, usually in, in July the the book that we talk about is is pretty solid. And again, this is no uh, exception. I don't know much else about Greg, but he seems like a very interesting character, and I hope he does write more in the future. But without further ado, let's talk about Leg. Uh, I will do a, a summary without spoiling the end of the book because that feels somewhat important. But I will do an analysis that kind of covers, uh, um, you know, all, all of the books. So there will be spoilers there. So if you want to read this book, I suggest you do it before you finish this video. Uh, yeah, summary, analysis, and then we'll move on from there. So Leg, of course, focuses on Greg Marshall. He talks about how he was born into a somewhat rowdy Utah family with like three other siblings. Uh, and he has parents, a mother and a father who are journalists. Uh, his mother wrote a column pretty frequently where she talked about various goings on in the, in the family. Uh, Greg had cerebral palsy growing up, but he notes that he was never told about it uh, because his mom didn't want to hinder his growth or uh, lead other people to make assumptions about his own ability. And so she just never told him about it and told him that he had tight tendons instead, which uh, like he didn't find out until he was 30 and he was kind of angry, but also he understood where she was coming from, even if, the, even if her, her point of view was a little bit ableist. Although what's interesting is he did read past um, uh, sort of daily or weekly articles from his mother where she kind of noted that he did have cerebral palsy without outright coming in, uh, coming out and saying it. Uh, he, Greg also notes that his mom uh, had cancer a couple times in her life uh, and that his father had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, which would eventually go on to kill him. Uh, and uh, yeah, like, um, so it was a bit of a struggle for her, for, uh, uh, Greg and his family growing up uh, and coupled with the fact that he doesn't really understand uh, his cerebral palsy he has a bit of a um, a weird time growing up not really understanding himself and not really understanding you know what other people really think of him and there's another aspect of him that uh, that he doesn't really understand either when he's going through puberty and that's the fact that he's gay uh, he sort of understands it um, when he's going through his teen years but he doesn't have words to put to it and it's really difficult to say in Utah because that's gonna make you a bit of a pariah uh, given how conservative Utah is and the other kids, other boys in school kind of understand it and keep their distance from him uh, without outright coming out and, and saying it. Uh, so he doesn't really get a chance to bond with the other teen boys. And he, he starts to feel like same sex feelings for men and not really knowing what that precisely means. Uh, he, meet, he meets a, a, a young man named John in high school and they, they strike up a bit of a friendship. He feels uh, attraction to John, but John 
doesn't really give an indication about whether he feels the same way. Eventually, he comes out to John, and John is surprised and says that he doesn't, he's not interested in Greg in the same way, uh, but he still wants to be friends. Like, that doesn't change their friendship, so he's very accepting, and Greg uh, is coming to understand what what love and, and what friendship means in, in that regard. And uh, he has his gay awakening at that point where he's um, he's more uh, socially active. He petitions for uh, Utah to get rid of their, uh, their ban on gay marriage. Unfortunately, it's 2004 and that does not happen so quickly. And he finds oppression, um, not only with his uh, disability, but also with his sexuality and his, uh, his sort of gender identity in that regard. And uh, he has to sort of deal with that for what seems to be the next 10 years. Uh, later on in his life, he goes to Eastern Europe, uh, along with um, a couple other people, including a, a young man named Tyler. Uh, when he's in college, he ha- he has a further gay awakening there where he starts having sex. Lots of descriptions of male, male-on-male uh, sexuality in this book, which is not, you know, scary or anything to me. It's just, uh, you don't really see that depicted in fiction a lot. Well, not fiction, but non-fiction, uh, especially in the mainstream. Uh, so it's very welcome here to get the, get that sort of uh, for variety of experience out of life. Uh, but he's he's interested in Tyler, although their relationship doesn't really go beyond Eastern Europe. Uh, and he starts dating a man named uh, Kevin a short while later. Kevin is a bit sketchy and uh, doesn't really tell Greg everything about himself. He also seems like a cult leader, if, if I'm not to be mistaken, and, and Greg finds out that he's lying a lot at one point, and they go their separate ways. Uh, he also talks about uh, his sister's experience with Asperger's or autism spectrum disorder uh, after her uh, after their father dies, noting that she had a, a bit of a rough go of it because her mom wasn't really there for her. Her mom was grieving and then entered into a same-sex relationship as well after the their father died, and. Um, like he was trying to be there for Mona and trying to get her diagnosed so she could understand more about herself, given his whole experience in life, especially how he didn't find out about cerebral palsy until he was 30. But Mona seemed resistant to this diagnosis and uh, wanted to follow her own path. Uh, and so Greg realized the only thing he could really do was be there for Mona when she needed him, even if she wouldn't necessarily you know, get the help that might make things a little bit easier for her in life. Uh, and then from there, really the last 50 pages take place of the story, uh, where Greg talks about a great many other things, but I will not spoil that here. Uh, go read it on your own, and then I'll talk about the rest of the story in the analysis section. In terms of analysis, boy howdy, is there quite a bit worth talking about with Leg? Uh, even though, again, this is a fictional, or not a fiction, this is, this is non-fiction, this is somebody's life, so it's very difficult to analyze it. Uh, but Greg does touch upon a, a couple different themes throughout the story that, that apply to his life. And one of those themes is the aspects of your life, the aspects of yourself that are hidden from yourself. Greg is unaware of his own disability for 30 years of his life. It's, uh, and that is due to a number of reasons. It's, uh, it's, it's due to the fact that this is ignorance on his part. Nobody told him he had a disability. His mom found out and then just decided to keep it to herself. And presumably his father also knew and just decided to keep it to himself. Uh, which, which, which she do, she did partially because uh, of ableist reasons, as, as Greg notes. Like she assumed that, oh, like disability isn't real. You can do anything that you want, and it's true, you can do anything that you want. But if you have a disability, that needs to be accommodated for. Uh, you know, you can't just rely on. Um, society to to uh you know uh form up you sometimes you have to force it to form up and be accepting and and make uh, accommodations or whether it be physical or or just um other types of accommodations uh to allow you to thrive in whatever setting that you're in so there's a little bit of ableism on her part uh but it's also due to the fact that she recognized the ableism in other other areas of, of the world like school was just going to lump him into a um, into a category, like a special education category, and forget about them. I've seen that happen in Florida before, uh, as, as well as a couple other places. Uh, rather than, than see the potential within him, they would have said, oh, yes, cerebral palsy, let's ignore that and, and, um, and focus on these other students who might perform better. Uh, and so, uh, like her, his mom, her, his mom had her reasons for trying to hide it from him as well as uh, the rest of the world. 
Uh, but um, like that's that's a complete entire aspect of your personality, an aspect of who you are that is kind of hidden from the world. And so it, it doesn't really feel uh, fair to Greg in that regard. And then on the other side of things, this is partially hidden because uh, of a willful hiding. Like may, there's an a, there's a part of Greg that knows that it's not just t tight tendons, that this is not how people struggle, like or that people don't really have tight tendons or anything like that. And that's a made up term, and he knows it, but he doesn't want to fully admit it because of what that it would entail, uh, because of how it it would further stand to other him in in a world where he's already pretty pretty othered, <laughs> pretty pushed to the margins. Allow me to read you an interesting quote from this. I couldn't get Winona's question about my leg out of my head. Was I proud? I'd sculpted my body in the name of becoming myself. The leg surgeries, the constant exercising. For all the attention I lavished on my appendage, though, I was only proud of it when I could successfully conceal it. When I sidled into my seat at a basketball game or carried a chair across a lumpy lawn without detection. And that's that's a fascinating quote because it, it it shows that like Greg is aware that his leg is is different than other people's legs that there's something uh, like different about him that requires him to do a little bit more extra work uh, and and he goes out of its way out of his way to hide it so on some level maybe an unconscious level he's aware of his disability but refuses to speak about it possibly due to internalized ableism possibly due to the knowledge that once he once he you know, says it out loud, society will uh, marginalize him even further or might not give him the tools that he fully needs to uh, succeed. But on the other hand, like there's another aspect of this uh, hiding an aspect of yourself and that's being in the closet. For a good portion of, uh, of his uh, teenage years, like 15, 16 years into his life, Greg is in the closet. Some of this he's aware about, others of this he's uh, he's not really aware about, um, but it does become known to him. And he, he uh, like at one point he says, oh, I'm not gay. I, I'm just attracted to celebrities or, or something like that. Uh, so like there's an additional layer of things that he's trying to hide, something that he doesn't want known because he's afraid of being ostracized, because he's afraid of being judged, uh, because it'll, it'll marginalize him. Like he's, he's seen what Utah is like. They, uh, and especially he's seen how they vote. Like they're definitely not going to uh, accept him as a as a complete citizen uh, when they could very well restrict his rights. Uh, so it's 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 very difficult, and you see the layers of how Greg is hiding and why he might want to hide aspects of himself or not completely know all aspects of his uh, personality. And in a way, Mo's journey kind of mirrors Greg's. Uh, like she keeps an aspect of herself hidden. But whereas Greg does it because he's, he's afraid of being othered and, and whatnot, and like some of it might be accidental on Greg's part or uh, due to the fact that it was kind of just hidden from him, uh, Mose is less that. Like she's told, hey, you might have autism. You might be on, you might have Asperger's or something like that. Uh, like she's aware of it, but she willingly chooses not to seek out that diagnosis. Like, uh, part of the story is Greg trying to convince her to go get help because she clearly needs it. She's not in a, in a very um, emotionally well state, mentally well state after her father's father dies. And she reacts in a way that suggests she might be on the spectrum and she might need more help in order to manage her emotions. Uh, but Mona's like, nah, that might be the case, but what's it going to do to help me? Uh, for Greg, like knowing that uh, reveals an, an aspect of his personality that makes everything make sense for him. It helps him understand more more about himself. For Mona, it won't really do that for her. Like, so what if she's on the spectrum? Like, that's she doesn't identify as, as autistic. Like, that's not uh, a thing that she's going to envelop into herself. She wants a completely different life for herself, which makes a lot of sense and whatnot. But also at the same time, if you don't get that diagnosis, you can't get those accommodations that you deserve from society. Like, there's going to be something hindering you in that way, like obstacles. And so not willing to seek out that diagnosis or not even willing to get help like there's going to be something that feels off or like you're not going to get the counseling or therapy that you, you might need uh that greg was clearly suggesting that she go go get and so it's interesting how their stories kind of mirror and how they both have po positive outcomes in their story but mo mo mona mo um and and greg are two completely or like approach it in two different ways Greg is also talking about the power of family and friends, which sounds incredibly cheesy, 
but it's it's very obvious how uh, power or like or how family and friends are helpful when dealing with the issues that Greg is dealing with. Like he's, like he's able to succeed through his family and friends. When his dad is dying, when his mom has cancer, he's able to lean on his siblings, even if they are jerks a lot of the time. He can rely on them to help them or help him or like help him. I, figure out uh, a sort of tough situation. They're very, uh, like his sisters and brothers and sisters are very accepting of his gay identity at first, uh, even if they do make fun of him a little bit for it. Uh, whereas he, it's a bit more of a struggle with his mom and dad uh, to get to the point where he um, he needs to be. Uh, but his mom it still has dedication. Like she works tirelessly in the background, even though she hides his disability, like she still works to go to the doctors and find out what she needs to do to go to um to go to uh like her the school and say hey you can't just lump him into a category you have to treat him on an equal footing uh so like his mom's dedication and his father's dedication helps ensure that that he's able to get the education and the and the experiences in life that he is is entitled to uh, and then he has the support of his lovers, who are all bizarre, a b bizarre cast of characters. And even John, his friend who I mentioned earlier, like he comes out to John, and John is pretty accepting of him, which is uh, um, incredibly important because if someone, do, like if you come out to someone and they're, they're the first person you come out to, and they're they're not reacting positively at all, like that's going to negatively affect you for some time. And so uh, Greg is very lucky to be able to have that sort of uh, positive encounter. Uh, the first go round, uh, and Greg also uh, supports his family as well. You see that throughout the story, but you also see that with Mona, where after realizing that that uh, a diagnosis or going to therapy isn't going to be something that she does, he realizes that he just has to be there for her to support her in her time of need, uh, to help her through the grief that she's feeling for uh, the death of her her father, uh, and that's pretty pretty helpful. And it shows again like the power of, of family and friends, um, how not everyone might might. Not everyone might have that luxury of family and friends, but when you do have that, it, it can really help you achieve great things and at least uh, feel better or do better in a time that is so stressful and, and full of pressure. Greg is also talking about disability here, which is a bit obvious given uh, the focus of the story. Uh, he talks about his own personal journey, which is probably not the same as, you know, someone else with cerebral palsy, but it is an experience that one, one person might have. Uh, he notes the the uh, sort of ableism that exists in the world with the the school failings, how society views someone like Greg who uh, doesn't fit into the norm, the ridicule that he sometimes faced, or uh, sort of the uh, the like uh, the ridicule or the bot labeling in, in the categories and saying, oh, you have a disability, so that makes you a, a certain way. But it also shows the internalized ableism and how he feels about his disability as well as other disabilities and how like, oh, I don't have a weakness. I just need to do better. And it's like that, that can't, that like doesn't really help. Like, uh, like his mom believed that like, oh, disability wasn't real. You can, you can thrive through anything as long as you get the help and the dedication you need. And that doesn't always work because, you know, cerebral palsy is still cerebral palsy and it doesn't really get better throughout your life. Uh, there aren't really miracle cures for that. There's no way that like hard work and perseverance, it can only take you so far. Um, so you see a little bit, a bit of that internalized um, sort of ableism there. Uh, and you also see a connection to gay rights. There's there's a strong overlap between like gay rights and disability rights, uh, which you uh, I saw a little bit when I talked about um, Being Human uh, by uh, by Judy Human. Uh, really solid book. Definitely recommend that you go read it out there. Uh, but like there's there's a, a connection and intersectionality where a fight for one is 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 connected to a fight for another, and so it's necessary to show up for both fights. Uh, for Judy Human, that that entailed like inviting the Black Panthers to your uh, disability sit-in uh, in order to ensure that you were getting the rights that you were entitled to. Uh, and and here, like Greg is advocating for gay rights, but in doing so, uh, it, it also provides an opportunity to advocate for disability rights. Um, you, you can't really separate those two identities from Greg without creating a whole different person. And so uh, he like it's necessary to view the entire being and see the intersectionality there, rather than just simply looking at, at 
Greg as a as a gay individual or a disabled individual. He's both, and it's necessary to fight for the rights of of, um, of people who are in, in both categories. Really, many categories, but intersectionality takes place there, of course. There are other things that I really love about uh, about Leg, including um, the uh, sexual disability and sexuality sort of connection there as well. You don't again, as as I mentioned before, you don't really see a lot of um, uh, gay stories out there in the mainstream, but you also don't see a lot of um, uh, stories that focus on sexuality and, and disability and how people with disabilities can still have sex. Um, it might be a little bit more difficult, but it can very well happen, and then it's a great time for everyone involved. Uh, and I, I really uh, like Greg's attempt to really bring more awareness of that. And uh, it, it does appear like it's a graphic description at times, but, uh, you know, you, you see a lot of graphic descriptions of heterosexual love, so you might as well see the other kind uh, as well. Uh, and then also the chapter on uh, Mona, more ham as it's called, uh, like that was very relatable to me, it really struck a chord with me because, you know, uh, like my sister, like I have a younger sister and I, I feel very protective of her, but I've also seen her have a very rough go of it. Um, not only since my dad died, but even before then, long before then, just a very rough upbringing and whatnot. And, uh, I've always felt protective, but I, I also recognize that I, there, there might be times when I can't help her and I feel powerless. And so that really kind of uh, resonated with me as, as uh, Greg was talking about it. So uh, kudos to him for being able to make um, uh, part of his story extremely relatable, if we even if we don't come from similar places in life. A couple things that I didn't like about this story, of course, Greg has an immense amount of privilege in his life because he seems to come from an upper class background. His parents, you know, owned a couple of newspapers and they didn't seem to really struggle too much, including like even though like his mom had cancer and his father uh, had ALS, they were able to go to uh, trips to Europe and travel a lot. And uh, it seems like that, that Greg doesn't really acknowledge that privilege that's there. And that, that's important because even though Greg has a disability and whatnot, his, his mom was able to use her uh, means, her funds, her, her, uh, her money to pay for these tests for Greg and uh, uh, to, to really maybe quiet the, 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 the school education system to treat him as a, um, as a, as a regular individual rather than as a special education case. Uh, Greg doesn't really acknowledge that, but it, it, it's definitely apparent as, as he talks more and more um, and, and doesn't really acknowledge that aspect uh, within the story. But I, I feel like that's important to bring up uh, because again, like money often determines your outcomes in life, especially when you have a disability. Uh, and then I also think the story kind of ends too cleanly, sort of just ends with Greg's marriage, uh, which takes place around two, 2015. And he kind of points out, oh, Hillary Clinton's ahead in the polls. But of course, we know that's not how things end. Donald Trump becomes president. And uh, especially um, like the situation for LGBT individuals does not get better. It has in fact gotten worse with uh, trans people targeted and threats of gay marriage being made illegal uh, around the country again. Uh, and for Greg to kind of stop in 2015, that paints a picture of a bright future, but we, we know that that's not really the case, but maybe, you know, it's, maybe we, he chose to stop it there for that precise reason. And, um, I'm, I'm complaining about how he chose to tell the story at that point. So it's not as bad, but it is it is noticeable here. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Leg by Greg Marshall. A really good uh, book, a good memoir about uh, Greg's own life and his experiences as a, a gay man as well as a man with a disability. I strongly recommend that you go out and read this. Uh, it'll, it'll probably be a, a, a really solid memoir, um, but it'll also be a, a, a good study of uh, of disability, uh, of uh, cerebral palsy, in case you haven't heard those kinds of stories before. I know a lot of people might not even really know what cerebral palsy is, uh, so it's it's important to be exposed to those kinds of stories. Uh, so yeah, I, I do recommend it. Uh, if you have read it before, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. would love to hear and have a conversation with you about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this book or this author if they do not already know. Otherwise, join the Discord so we can continue uh, conversations about books or, or movies or whatnot. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and Utah-based travels. Farewell.